to uh, okay 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 welcome to world camp milano 2019 uh, the first speaker of today is uh, ivana Sjokovic, digital marketer pr and self consultant she has been an organizer of uh, world camp europe uh, berlin 2019 thank you, thank you. and uh, is, is uh, an active member of the wordpress community Today, she will talk to us about uh, web storytelling and uh, how to do it properly, both for humans and uh, for science and science. Yes. So, let's start. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So, buongiorno a tutti. And that's about it with my Italian. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, this is my first time uh, work on Milano and the city of Milano. So I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I have a little stage fright because I'm opening today's uh, camp. And, uh, but at the same time, I'm very happy because my talk is, oh, hi there. My talk is about storytelling, which is something that brought us all here today. Uh, and throughout the day, you will hear many stories. And I um, invite you to pay attention to uh, what people are saying, uh, what kind of stories they are sharing sharing and try to uh, uh, discover the type of story they're talking about, which is something that I will share with you uh, in a little bit. So we are here today to talk about stories uh, in a way to use them to promote yourself, your businesses, your work, and to get benefit of it, whether it's uh, self-recognition or promotion of your work, your uh, business, your attracting new clients, whatever that might be. And at the very start, I would like to uh, uh, begin with this quote from uh, another tech guy, uh, Paul Jarvis, who said that everything can be a story, you just got to tell it. And I truly believe that each and every one of us has a story to tell. Uh, and uh, it's something that we've been using from the beginning of time. Like, we grew up with stories uh, through our parents, through our grandparents. Uh, even today, this is my kind of story, uh, something I share with you. So we are gathered here to talk about how to use the structured story to tell your business, to tell uh, uh, what it is that sets you apart from your competition, and to uh, uh, get results, driven results. Now, I'm sure you, you've heard about this sentence, this claim, but have you ever wondered what does it mean? Like, for me, I, I find this sentence a bit cold, uh, uh, too generic, and this claim is like, uninspiring even for me, because what is behind this sentence, content is king? For me, uh, uh, it's about the contest, context, not the, the, the content itself, because any type of content, uh, whether it's photo or visual, any kind, uh, combination of words or video, it's the context that matters. And that context is actually storytelling. The way we use our words, our, our visuals to share, whether it's our emotion or uh, to explain some complex information, share knowledge, uh, useful tips and tricks, which we all will do here today. So when I hear this content is king, actually I'm talking about storytelling because it's the core uh, essence of every content is and should be at least storytelling. Now, uh, this is something I came up with uh, some time ago when, when I was searching uh, how to portray how people see storytelling, people who are not familiar with this subject. So uh, uh, from the, for the outside world, world uh, storytelling is portrayed as something, uh, a bit of bragging self-promotion but uh, the truth couldn't be much more far from it uh, because storytelling is, uh, is a skill. It is uh, uh, a skill that you use to provoke emotion, to uh, get people to act upon what you're saying. And it's not something like, hey, look at me, I'm the great performer, I am, I'm killing with making websites or I do great copywriting, no. Show people, 
the way that you do business or your product or your services are helping people. And that's the core of storytelling, to persuade people uh, how, okay. how by using your uh, uh, special skills, your products, your services, is actually helping them solving their problem or uh, making their lives even better. Uh, and with that in mind, oh, this is okay. Uh, Apple, Airbnb, Coca-Cola, Lego, Nike, uh, the one thing they all have in common is that they all built their uh, businesses with stories because uh, Apple doesn't sell devices, it sells uh, power and a lifestyle as well as Coca-Cola. It's not a drink, but a like, vivid lifestyle. Uh, Lego doesn't sell toys, it sells imagination. And I would uh, add one more brand on that equation, and that is WordPress. Because uh, WordPress doesn't sell platform for your websites, but uh, as I think of it, reliable and safe home for your stories, whatever they might be. And because we are here on WordCamp uh, Milano, there is a big part of uh, WordPress uh, that is engaging in storytelling, which we'll uh, talk about a bit later. And knowing all that, uh, what is, uh, 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 how can we use those uh, uh, tips and tricks I will share and the uh, storytelling itself to promote ourselves and to get value from it? Uh, there are like uh, basic seven types of stories you can use to portray uh, your visions, your goals, your, uh, your businesses, and to promote them through storytelling. Now, these seven types, it's not something that I invented. It is uh, based upon a research of the thousands and thousands of uh, professionals and writers. So they came up with these uh, basic seven types, which are the underdog or the hero story, uh, which is something that you will use to describe uh, uh, you or your business is a hero and uh, some problem or the way you are conducting your business or some obstacles are uh, the uh, villain and how are you overcoming uh, those obstacles and becoming the better uh, person or better professional or uh, the obstacles can be something, some problem or issue your customer or target audience has. Describe, use this type of story to describe the way you on, and your business is solving problem to your customers and, that, and then you have this uh, hero or the underdog story. Then we have the quest story, which is a story about, let's say, you have some uh, goal, desire, some idea, and you want to uh, make it happen. Describe the ways or the, the, the steps you use to uh, uh, make this dream come true. So that would be the quest story. And it is an informational type of story. It is uh, something that your target audience can learn from. So by sharing your knowledge, your path, you are helping your uh, target audience. And at the same time, you are making them uh, realize uh, humans behind your business. And uh, they can connect easier with you. Then you have the, the classic journey return type of story. And uh, that is the story. Uh, you coming out of the comfort zone. It can be something like uh, like my story. I wasn't from a, a tech uh, industry. I am uh, a mother of three. I am totally uh, in the marketing industry. And somehow along the way, I started learning about the ways I can share my story and uh, be more out there uh, to the target audience. So I discovered after many, many other platforms, I discovered WordPress and learned to use it in a way that helped me uh, share my story to more people and to more targeted people. So that can be the journey return uh, type of story. Then we have a rags to riches story, uh, type of story that is uh, Cinderella or Ugly Duckling or even Oprah. Like how, uh, think of the ways uh, their path is and how they bloom out of nothing. So again, it can be something that you found yourself in the totally unknown situation and rise above. Uh, 
uh, comedy type of story, that is something that can be a um, funny anecdotal story about your business, your beginnings, or uh, something just for fun, because uh, no matter how hard we try to like inform people of, about ourselves, our businesses, what we do, sometimes it's just fun and helpful to share something that is not all that business related. Just go out there and uh, talk about some funny situation, let people connect with you in that way to like uh, humanize your brand. Then we have a tragedy type of story, which is a classic story like, don't do this or you will regret it. That's, uh, that's the type of story you will use if you perhaps crashed your client's website. So uh, describe the steps, what did you do wrong? It's a classic uh, failure story, but also it's something that people can learn from and you are helping them along the way to not make the same mistakes you did. Then uh, we have a rebirth type of story, which is a classical tragic story, but with a happy ending, like uh, how you did mess up your client's site, but you learned to uh, uh, quick fix it and how you did it. Then those are like tips and tricks you can include in that story to help, un again, help people understand it better. And uh, along the way, you are uh, showing them that you are yeah, human. You are not some uh, uh, developer robot who are just uh, uh, doing codes and numbers, but you are, you, ma you are making mistakes and you learn from them. So by sharing those type of stories, you show yourself as a good professional, but at the same time, you are educating some future developers or business owners with the stuff you did. And uh, those types of stories, you can use any or each of them uh, to portray uh, what it is that you do, but it's not enough. Uh, those stories that you tell needs to have uh, some more elements, and it is something that I will uh, share now. A uh, good story is something that, first of all, good story is simple. I, uh, you tell your story by using tone of voice your audience uses. Uh, you are all professionals here and you talk very specifically, but uh, outside of your bubble, common people don't understand all those equations, uh, co coding, whatever there is that you do and use in your everyday language with your colleagues. So use the tone of voice your target audience uses. Make, make your stories very easy uh, and uh, uh, easy, easily readable and uh, understandable. Uh, again, good story provokes emotions, whether it is uh, happy, you want to make people happy, or you want to rage them, whatever your end goal with the story is, uh, uh, provoke some kind of emotion. Those are all triggers that will uh, make your story more memorable. Uh, a good story is honest and trusting. Uh, you don't want to and uh, uh, it's real, uh, or at least it sounds real, because you don't want to make your story a, a bit of fairy tale and sci-fi that no one will uh, uh, connect with or believe it. So always talk about from your perspective, but uh, always think about the end user or the reader, the target audience, what it is that you want them to do with your story, uh, whether it's to understand it better or whether it's uh, to know your work, your business, your product, how can it help them in their lives? And it needs to be relevant to the target group. Uh, again, uh, if you are uh, building websites you, and you are building websites like uh, uh, niche targeted websites for, let's say, uh, photography professionals, you don't want to talk uh, for and to share stories for mommy bloggers because it's not relevant for them. So make your stories as, as more specific as you can to reach the, that target audience. Now, we covered the type of stories and the necessary elements, but is it enough? Like you will, you know what to write about, you, you know who are you talking to, and you came up with great type of story to share, but is it enough? Of course not, because your stories, we are talking about uh, uh, online storytelling, internet opened us a huge amount of possibilities to, and uh, it's helping us 
share our stories even wider. So with that in mind, we need to optimize our stories for both people and uh, search engines, because no matter how great story you came up with, if it's not optimized for web, for web search, you won't get the results that you need because you might miss the opportunity to, to get discovered on Google or any other search engine, which is why I want to share some quick and easy, semi-easy, on-page SEO tips and what it is that all of you can do with your stories to polish them up and make them even better and more discoverable on uh, Google. And this is something uh, uh, that I came up with uh, during uh, recent years, like the anatomy of the perfectly written text, no matter is it your story, uh, blog post, an article, uh, the necessary, basic necessary elements, every type of story needs to have in order to be discovered on uh, search engines. Now, uh, this is part of on-page SEO. Uh, and it is something that you, any of you, can do with your content on your websites, on your blogs. But just doing this, it's not enough. Your website needs to be, like, uh, hosting needs to be fast, servers needs to be fast, technical SEO needs to be done properly. And then this, which will make you stand out and be more discoverable on uh, search engines, of course, if you did your keyword research right and get the, the right target audience. So let us start. The headline is the, the, the main thing you need to, to worry about. Uh, after you've written your, your uh, story, uh, based upon the research and the, the right key phrase that your target audience uses and that you want to compete for, you need to think up, uh, about the way to use that key phrase in the headline. Uh, to be uh, reliable, relevant, and uh, natural in the headline. Headline uh, doesn't need to be clickbait, because it's something, you, you all seen it, it's something uh, Daily Mail and all, all other daily news use to, to grab people's attention, but they don't provide value. If you use clickbaits, be sure to deliver the promise from that clickbait itself. So the headline needs to be very concrete, very specific to, to have the, the desired key, key phrase in it. And it needs to be, um, the length of it is about 60 characters. It's, or the key phrase needs to be in that 60 characters because it's the, the, the length of the uh, visibility in the search result. Then we have meta description, which is something uh, m many people overlook. Like, Okay, I will put one or two sentences between in it, and that's that. Uh, meta description is like a hook. It is something that uh, uh, promises to reader, to to people who use search engines, that they will find the answer if they click on your result. So make sure that and the length of it is about. 140 to 160 characters. Make sure to put the key phrase in it as well, if it's natural, and to make it stand out, uh, give people the reason to click on your result and not on someone else's. Then the content itself. Uh, your story, if you, you did your research well and uh, you know what you're talking about, don't shy away from the length of the story. Uh, People, no matter how busy we all are, if it's something that interests us, we will find the time to read no matter the length of the article or the story is. So put yourself out there and write as long as you can or as long as it needs to be written. Like whatever there is that you want to say, don't shy away from the, the length of it. Uh, because uh, people from once want to know, and the other thing, Google likes longer articles. There was, uh, in 2016, a research of the about 10,000 uh, result on the first page of Google, and the uh, approximately length of the articles that are on the first 10 uh, uh, spots on Google uh, on the first page are 1,600 words. So Google likes longer articles. Uh, another thing, uh, you need more space to, to go 
in as much in details as you can. You can say and share your expertise or whatever it is that you want to say uh, with your story in like 300, 400 words. I mean, that, that doesn't bring you value. Not to mention that the story with less than 300 words is considered to be a spam doesn't provide value so make sure that your content is well written it's uh, it takes you don't shy away from the length and use uh, don't just use words uh, use the help of the photographs of other kind of visuals like infographics or video because you can even tell uh, uh, more specifically your story with them. People connect with the photograph uh, much easier than the words sometimes, but also it's uh, another benefit because you can get discovered with uh, images as well by explaining your uh, what it is on that image, image alt tag that is called, uh, describe what it is on that image, and maybe you won't get discovered uh, via regular search, but via Google search, people will find you. So that's a bonus as well. And then when you wrote your story in that way, uh, provided value for the target audience, like uh, answer their question, uh, help them uh, understand what is it, what it is that you do and how that what you do can benefit them and make their lives easier. Then and only then at the end, you will uh, put call to action, ask something in return, whether it's uh, you want them to share your story or to uh, ask you some questions or you want them to uh, sign up for your newsletter or buy an ebook, whatever it is that you want with that story and uh, from them, you will put at the end because you have to give something first in order to ask something from them. And then, of course, after, afterwards, you need to make your uh, story more shareable, which includes uh, put all those uh, sharing buttons, make people easy to share your story. like. Uh, user uh, uh, experience needs to be that that easy and by doing all that you congratulations you just did your on page seo and helped your story uh, stand out uh, from the uh, from the crowd so whatever type of story you use this is the way to polish them also when you write longer articles it's helpful to use bullet points to uh, to like break uh, those uh, uh, big uh, chunks of uh, text with some subheadings and uh, uh, bullet points to make people easier to to scroll and to uh, like read your your uh, story because if you have just a chunk of uh, text it's not very uh, engaging and people will lose uh, interest like the uh, break it with a photograph with like the bullet points and subheadings also that is something that uh, uh, google likes and it's uh, it's more easier for their uh, uh, algorithm and uh, spiders to like scroll it and to index it in that way uh, now that we uh, done that, uh, there are also numerous tools we can use to uh, further polish our stories and to help us stand out even even better. Because and the very first I use, I mean, uh, it is something that is uh, very helpful to you all. I'm not an English native speaker, so I need to rely on tools I can use to help me in proofreading and gra English grammar. So Grammarly is a tool I use on a daily basis because I have uh, numerous uh, foreign clients that I write for. So uh, you can use it either free or premium uh, to correct your grammar and your uh, writings on English. I highly recommend it. It's, it's really a life savior if you are writing content on English. Uh, Hemingway app also, it is something that it's free, a tool that you can use to uh, uh, scan your uh, story in a way, if it's uh, readable enough, easy, uh, uh, understandable to your audience. Uh, it checks if the length of the sentence is too long. It, if it's uh, too complex, it will notify you with the different colors, um, help you make it more understandable. 
Canva and picture, picture charts are tools uh, to help you uh, make better visuals and to make infographics. Whether you don't have a designer or you don't want to pay them, sorry, uh, you can use tools like this to really help you if you are just starting your business and don't have a budget. Canva and picture charts are tools to use to help you with your any type of visuals for uh, that accommodate your story. And of course, talking about shareability, because even Google needs help in that uh, uh, matter. Uh, social media, some say, are not uh, 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 SEO uh, uh, type of signal, but I think it is, because the more people share your stories, it indexes Google, it sells some kind of signal that that story matters, and it will give some more juice to it and more uh, visibility in time. So uh, go on social where your target audience is, connect with them, and share your stories there as well. Pinterest and Snapchat are a way to discover relevant topics and to see uh, what type of stories people want to, uh, to connect with today, because uh, we are getting younger and younger target audience like uh, today's kids will be our tomorrow's uh, customers. We need to understand the way they want to connect and interact with the content in order to serve them our stories properly. And I would like to add uh, one more tool there, which is something that I've been using since 2012, and that is WordPress. Uh, not because this is uh, WordCamp uh, Milano, but I've been using all sorts of uh, uh, CMSs out there. I started with Blogspot like in 2005 and 2006, then uh, went on to Joomla. I worked with Typo3. Like, I've been all over the place, and I really couldn't connect with all those platforms in a way that I did it with WordPress, which really makes uh, made my... Uh, life and my work that much easier. Uh, today, I have about 10 websites that I own and work with, my own, not my clients, and then client websites. So I really needed a, a reliable uh, CMS that I could use, that I could, uh, li let's say, share my knowledge about with other colleagues so that I wouldn't need to rely on programmer for any type of work that I needed to done. Uh, Joomla didn't work for me. I worked with it three years and it was really, really disastrous. And the, 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 the moment I transferred my sites on WordPress, like that was uh, the, the, the beginning of everything and exponentially rise for me. What I, what I like about WordPress is that it's initially free. You don't need any money to, to work with it, you can like only buy a domain and uh, uh, buy hosting and start uh, building your site. You can build your site on WordPress yourself. Like there are tons of uh, useful tutorials and thanks to you, to open source community, we can all learn to do it ourselves. Uh, the, the amount of themes, of plugins, of widgets we can use, it's really something that has uh, made my life easier. Not to mention that uh, WordPress is very SEO friendly, which is also something that I debate with uh, uh, other SEO professionals because uh, they tend to say that WordPress is not SEO friendly, but I know for a fact that it is because all of you are doing and making it better by uh, uh, following Google's uh, uh, tips and tricks and ways to, to make uh, uh, the code uh, reliable. Not to mention Yoast uses day-to-day -day collaboration with Google to make their uh, products SEO friendly. So really it is something that, that uh, made my life uh, very easy. And of course, thanks to Gutenberg, uh, it all made me uh, make it and uh, work within it uh, with more fun. Now, I don't know the back end of story uh, uh, with Gutenberg and uh, what it is that uh, it drives developers crazy, but for me as a content creator, Gutenberg really helped me to uh, uh, play around with content uh, much more than the old uh, WordPress editor did. So there's a plus another two. And um, in a way to, let's say, put money where my mouth is, American expression, I want to show you 
few examples uh, uh, to know that the system works, the, the stuff that I talked to you about briefly now really works. You've all heard about uh, Yoast and their Yoast con, uh, conference, SEO conference. And when you type Yoast con SEO tips, the very first two results are my results that I did for a client of mine. So not Yoast, not Yoast con conference, me. Like this is uh, 10 days ago, I did a uh, hidden like, like Google search. And this is articles I wrote for uh, colleagues of yours, uh, Max team developers, which are uh, my Serbian guys that I discovered while using some of their teams. And then we got to know each other, started working together. So I did the research, what it is that some of their target audience needs to hear, to know, uh, wrote about these uh, uh, very specific uh, yes, con uh, Yoscon conference tips because uh, people want to know what it is that is relevant in new and to, to implement it on their businesses. So by using type of stories that I described and by optimizing the, the articles and the stories in that way, I managed to not only for 2018, but for 2019 as well to go on the first two uh, results on Google. But there's an even better example, like search snippet. It is like, you can't pay for this. Uh, Google search snippet is something that Google puts above the result one. So again, an article for, for I did for Max, uh, which is embed Facebook video on WordPress. And Google found it so much trustworthy that it put it uh, as a top result when, when people search for it. And as you can see, there's me, then people also ask, and there's WordPress beginner, which is alpha and omega in the content world and in the world of sharing stories. And I somehow was managed to go even higher than them. Also by using the type of stories I told you, by doing my research uh, the, to the right target audience, using the tone of voice, those people use, and by using the tools I've described, such as Grammarly. It is a huge, huge help. If you are working with the international audience and you want, you are talking with them in English, use Grammarly or any other relevant uh, uh, and similar tool, because people really pay attention to the, 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 the way you talk and uh, share your stories. You don't want to be uh, misjudged or uh, to sound unprofessional. So Grammarly is a must if, if you are uh, working in English. And just not to, to uh, think that this is a mistake, here's another snippet, again for Max. Uh, photo licenses, because they have one of their premium teams is targeted to photography professionals and of course, uh, it is a huge, huge uh, uh, deal to know about photo licenses or even for bloggers. Uh, too often we see that people just go on Google search, type something relevant for them and uh, take uh, any photo from Google, but it's, uh, it's wrong, it's not legal and you can get fined for it. So this is an article that was really informational uh, for targeted audience to understand what are photo licenses and how they, they can use uh, knowledge of this to discover for, uh, free photos they can use or uh, in what amount they can use them. So now you know the system works. If you uh, implement anything that I told you uh, today about and uh, uh, try to write your stories in a way to use type of stories I, I shared to uh, uh, use elements and include them in your stories, then there is no way you can't be uh, that good as I did. Again, I'm not a native English speaker, but I somehow, not somehow, by my knowledge, managed to uh, get these and many other results in the first, on the first page and among top three, top five results on Google. So if I can do it, all of you can. Just you need to know how, and this is something that we briefly discussed uh, now. 
And I would like to finish this talk with another quote, start the quote finishing, uh, Seth Godin, big entrepreneur uh, from America, who said that marketing is not longer about uh, the stuff that you make, but the stories you tell. Uh, people don't trust advertising, they don't trust uh, uh, commercials and promotion, uh, over promotional content, but they do tend to trust the, the stories that you share. Don't, when you share your stories, don't talk about uh, your products and yourself per se. Talk about solution you bring. Talk about the way you can uh, ease people's pain and help them uh, in their everyday lives. And in that way, in that matter, if you can do it, then you are one or two or three steps closer to turning those target audience into uh, future prospects, your clients, your uh, uh, colleagues, whatever. So I hope you enjoyed in this talk as much as I did. Thank you for your time. And now we have some briefly time for questions. If you pick my brain, we can sum up something more. Thank you. Uh, yeah, she took. Come on, don't be shy. Questions? I love questions. I'm uh, for uh, a small question. Thank you, Ivana. Uh, very good uh, Thank you. talk. Very interesting and in, in, uh, informative points. Thank you. Uh, one question I have is about uh, the, the te technical SEO. So, you know, they say Google is uh, too smart uh, in like recent years that he, it, it does uh, it does semantic understanding of the content of the pages. So some people say SEO is not relevant anymore, which I disagree, of course, but I wanted to know what is your idea? Uh, okay, uh, I disagree as well. I mean, uh, people who say that SEO isn't important are the people who don't have time or knowledge or willingness to work with it because it uh, it's something that scares them and possibly something that uh, they don't want to uh, uh, mess up with. But the truth is uh, SEO is really highly uh, important uh, from the technical point of view, which is something that you need to uh, have clean code, a well-developed website that needs to be responsive, uh, quick load, all of those stuff are important as much as this on-page SEO to make your content stand out. Because if you have a slow website, people don't, like, people will go away and then, then there is a higher bounce rate and they won't come back. Uh, then if it's not uh, responsive, we, every one of us uses mobile phones, so we want our information very easily uh, visible on mobile. So all of that is important, like it's essential. essential. Uh, just like Google Analytics you put at the very beginning of building a website and uh, sharing content, you need to have all SEO aspects uh, in order for your website to work and your content to be visible and shareable. Uh, mm, they wouldn't have that good results. They will. They would possibly come on. I don't know, third or fourth uh, page of Google, but not on first. N like it's, uh, it's not. Uh, uh, it's not uh, possible to get without optimization because uh, Google works on ser on uh, search queries. And uh, it is our job to understand that and to guess and to uh, research those uh, search queries from our relevant targeted audience in order to uh, produce content in a way that they will like to uh, read it and also to optimize it in a way that Google understands it and to put that with the specific keyword in uh, search query and to show it on top. Thank you. Okay. More questions? No. no. Uh, thank you very much, Ivana. Uh,